My name is Estella Dupuy, and uh, I am one of the contributors of uh, this book. And I wanted to tell you just how it starts. I used to go to international book fairs where Mr. Vikas, Vikas, Arias, <laughs> they told me that I pronounced wrong his name. <laughs> So Mr. Vikas Arya was having stands that uh, he goes to the international book fairs like uh, Frankfurt and uh, others. She, he is really uh, one of the best uh, publishers of this kind of book. I, I love everything that has to do with Indian mythology and uh, Indian sculpture. I was working with uh, a pandit uh, helping him to translate an ancient manuscript regarding uh, dealing with the Yogini knowledge. I was going to special places just to communicate, to feel these verses in, in the spaces, in the sacred spaces. And he proposed that I will write a book about the goddess. I thought it should be approached in different ways. I immediately asked my friends. All of us, we come from different backgrounds. We usually, during many, many years, share pictures, share articles, books, and so on. And we have even traveled together to many of these sites. And then we, we decided to do the book together and to present the goddess through different aspects. And this uh, variety is what we find very often in the Yogini temple. When you go inside, there are so many different goddesses, and yet the energy of the goddess is there. So it's the one in the multiply forms. The power is very strong. And I feel that a temple is a little bit like our own body, where full of energies are there. And we see in the temples different sorts of uh, goddesses. One is this scary, with thanks out, scary goddesses, that uh, they look like they want to, to kill some demons or have just killed some <laughs> demons. These demons, for me, are not outside. They are inside us. They are demons like fear, a little bit what I have just now, <laughs> uh, or, or uh, sometimes anger, sometimes uh, uh, envy or laziness. All these emotions, they are demons. And these goddesses that we have inside us, these energies, are ready to kill these emotions that need to to, to be handled. There are these shanty looking, uh, giving blessings that we have also those energies inside us that help us to go inside meditation and that we are there full of love and so on. And there are a third kind that there are those who have animal head. And those maybe <laughs> are talking about this uh, necessity that we have sometimes of removing our thinking mind and just let the intuition be there and to have this intuition that that animals have in order to survive or maybe to become like my ancestors <laughs> from South America the shamans that transform themselves in certain <coughs> animals. Maybe it was also that that was there. So anyway, in the temples, that they are open to the sky in, uh, in some geometrical forms, you see this variety of goddesses, but at the same time, it's a unity that is given sometimes by their same style. So you feel that is one unity in the multiple ways. And what we have in this book is a little bit that. We have different ways of approaching the knowledge or the experience of the goddess. And we call it on the trail of the yoginis because it is so different one to another that there are stories. And we love, you know that we love stories. And these are stories tell in different ways because each one of us come from different backgrounds. You have the, the scholars 
that know so much about old ancient scripts and about uh, uh, sculpture, iconography. We have the, the researcher that has, uh, Janet, that has gone through so many years of studying, looking, observing how the, the goddess of birth are there and the importance rituals that they are for giving birth. And we have Sima that expresses in her paintings is just the mandala. She expresses all the magnificence of the goddess in those images. And you have me that I am the traveler, the one that goes <laughs> in a journey, but mostly it's a journey inwards. So that is what I speak about in this book. Now I'm going to present Nili Machigo Pekar, and she is going to be the moderator for this uh, evening. She is uh, associated professor at uh, Jesus and Mary College at Delhi University. She has written seven books, I think, and all about, many about uh, Shiva or his entourage. And it was interesting because she told me that the first book she published, that it was his doctoral thesis, that uh, the publisher asked her, what are you going to study next? And then she said, the yoginis. And she has fulfilled, she has honored the yoginis. In all her books, she has a part that she talks about the yoginis in different forms, different views. And in this book, she is giving a wonderful connection that very few people have seen about one ancient established text the, that is in Brahman Quran that uh, is the Lalita Thousand Name. And she, she compares these different traditions because you know that mostly the yoginis have been associated with Tantra, but she combines these two different views in a wonderful way. Also, uh, Nilima has been fellow uh, in different universities in Europe and in America, and she gives a lot of lectures in different universities. And recently, I was in one lecture in Harvard. She rocked the place. <laughs> Every student was fascinated with her and her knowledge, and they want her to come back. So here, I can give you Nilima. Good evening, everyone. It's absolutely delightful to see all of you here this evening and to this much-awaited event. We've all looked forward to it so much. I just want to say just one or two words, I mean, just a few sentences about the book. Stella's already told you about the book, and I'm sure you all will at some point read it, or at least parts of the book. What is fascinating to me is that each and every one of these five women sitting here, all of us, have written our own books. We've individually published many books, different people, different types of books. But this book, the most beautiful thing, is that five women all have come together in harmony and have written a book which has gone over maybe four or five years, over discussions, over bottles of wine, over a lot of dinner, meals, and it just came and evolved. It just you know, grew organically. It's not like we said, okay, let's just do this book. It was just because we got along well together, we had this excitement when we were together. And believe me, we did not even agree with each other. So, you know, we are yoginis, we like to call ourselves a yogini gang. You know on WhatsApp you have to call yourself something or the other. So we call ourselves very playfully the yogini gang, and the yogini gang stays, and we feel happy when people call us the yoginis. So we don't agree with each other. We don't often agree, and yet there is such a lot of synchronicity between us. There's such a lot of bon homie between us, and that is something that is marvelous, because when you work alone, like we all do, scholars lead a very lonely life. They sit in libraries for hours by themselves, hardly interacting with many people. And then there are the five of us, traveling together, talking to each other, WhatsApping each other, disagreeing. It's just been a marvelous journey. So this book, it's with great happiness we present to you this evening the book on the yoginis, the Johnson yoginis. And I would like to now, first of all, call our wonderful publisher, who I sometimes call him our hapless publisher. There have been times when we have attacked him in the same manner that yoginis are supposed to attack other men. He's the sole man you can see here. It's like a token male over here. He's almost looking a little, should I say, a little scared. And, well, you know, we have all knocked on his doors. And we've gone and attacked him and said, why is the book not coming out on time? We're waiting. We've done this. And there are photographic evidence of him looking really scared. And all of us are like, because, because, hurry up. Wonderful man. With so much of patience and so much of grace, he's dealt with the five of us. And he's brought out a marvelous book. 
Uh, he is founder of a wonderful publishing house, Aryan International Books, which started in 1992. It is amazing the kind of titles and the kind of authors that he has published. People like Devangana Desai, people like um, Dilip Chakravarti or Harsha Dehejia, wonderful authors have been published by him. And we are indeed in very good company when he has published us. Thank you very much, Vikas. Um, so, uh, thank you. Thank you. So next is Javed Chawla, a very dear friend of mine for the last three decades at least. She is uh, she's a researcher, she's an activist, and she is someone who has done very unique work, worked with the Dais, the traditional birth givers. And how does her, book, her chapter come in with the rest of the Yogis? Is because when she was working with Dais in different parts of this country, absolutely grassroots level, going into the villages, interviewing them, talking to them, she saw a connection in the way they are ambivalent. They give you life and they can take away life. And there is something like that you find in the yoganis as well. Why just the yoganis, all the goddess traditions? They, they are capable, they have the power to give life, they have the power to take it away. When you read her essay, you'll find how marvelously unique it is in just the kind of research and the kind of field work that she has done. So we are very happy to have presented you, Janet. And just before I finish with that, just one last sentence. She believes so much in the traditional midwifery, you know, the dais and the kind of knowledge and tradition that they impart. She does think that we need to learn a lot from the dais and traditional medicine keepers. <laughs> and we have on stage the beautiful Noor, who is not only Janet's uh, daughter-in-law, but also is a wonderful blogger. She's a lawyer by profession, and we are so happy to have her here uh, doing this for us and honoring us. Thank you very much. I'd like now to present Professor Anamika Roy. She is a professor at Illawar University of Ancient Indian History, which is what I also teach. It's so nice to welcome her in our midst. She, we have not been able to meet her as often, but we've been in touch on email and on telephone. She is a fellow at the London Asiatic Society, and uh, she is a Royal Asiatic Society, and uh, she has written four books, many, many articles, and when you read her essay, you'll find that she has done so much of work on these particular yoganis from Shadol in Madhya Pradesh. So I'd like to welcome Professor Anand <laughs> Stella Dupuy, she's already talked about herself a little bit, but I'd like to tell you one thing. She was, I, I, I was really surprised when she said, I travel, and she said, I travel, it's within. No, 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 don't believe her. She is a relentless traveler. She is traveling all the time. She is one of those unique individuals who goes to one shrine somewhere remote in Orissa or Bengal, where she has to go into rickety boats and, you know, cockroaches everywhere and horrible things everywhere. She won't go once. She would have experienced deeply once, but she has to go back twice, thrice, four times, five times. Nobody can keep up with her. But what I like the most about her is, whatever she experiences, she doesn't keep it to herself. She goes online and she makes all these films which she shares with the world. Whatever experience she's gone through, whatever she's seen of the rituals, whatever, and she she make these films, short films, and you'll see her all over the, online, everywhere. And I think that's wonderful, the fact that she likes to share. And it's, this book came out of her hard work. She brought us together. All of us were busy with something or the other. And she said, let's just do it. And so Stella is the, she's, she's like the driving force between all of us. And I would like to welcome and felicitate her today. Stella, to you. And now we come to Seema Kohli, the most wonderful artist I have ever come across. Who works in all the mediums that are there? She is not only a painter, she's an installation artist. She, is, she goes delves deep into theater. She's a poet, she's a writer. Of course, she makes the most beautiful paintings. And she has had 30 solo shows all over the world and is recognized as one of the best artists. What she dreams, what she experiences in her deep meditations or when she travels or when she visits any of the shrines, she shares that all with us through her paintings, through her art. I think it's absolutely marvelous that an artist would do that, but then write about it so extensively in this book. So we're going to go into the mind, into the mental makeup of Seema Kohli. When you read the essay there, you're going to see what goes on in her mind when she's making those very intricate figures. Each time you look at the painting, you'll see something new. She's a marvelous artist, and we're very happy to have her as part of our book and in our midst today. Thanks. 